Welcome to Natural Habitat Adventures, Daily Dose of Nature. I'm your host, Sunny Vanderstar. Today's topic is the Galapagos, Adventure in the Enchanted Isles. And it will be presented by our fabulous NatHab expedition leader, Andreas Vergara. Andreas, thank you so much for being here today and for taking us to one of my very favorite places on earth, the Galapagos. Let's dive in. All right, thank you, Sony. Thank you, Natural Habitat, to allow me to present a little bit about this fantastic part of the world, the Galapagos Island, where I am right now at this moment in the island of Santa Cruz. I'm happy to share all of these information to all of our not havers and future travelers to this beautiful part of the planet. Well, dear friends, here we are, and a little bit of presentation, a little bit of. Well, my dear friends, welcome to the Galapagos Islands. I, we know that everybody wants to learn a little bit more about the Galapagos Islands, and definitely you want to get into this world, and maybe some of you wants to snorkel with the sea lions, isn't it? Well, it's good to know a little bit before you come here about what's going on in this fantastic trip from natural habitat and where wildlife found to the Galapagos Islands. There is um, a lot of things that uh, you occur here in Galapagos and all of them are just fantastic. And we have several boats and several activities that I, I wanna share with you in this uh, beautiful, experience that maybe some of you want to share this year, maybe next year, or any time that you want to come to join us. Very good. Well, important thing to, to talk a little bit about is that the natural habitat adventure, our main objective is conservation through traveling. We want our friends to travel the world, not only Galapagos, but different parts of the planet. And doing that, learn a little bit about our beautiful world and to protect this unique planet. Very good. This is me, Andres Vergara, maybe in the future a good friend. I'm from the Galapagos Islands. I've been working in Galapagos as a Galapagos naturalist guide for more than 17 years. And every day is a, like a new beginning. And before that, I was a captain in different yachts from the Galapagos tourist fleet. So I can tell you that I know a little bit about this part of the world. And definitely, I love it. My family lives in Galapagos, my wife, my, my children, and all of us, I think that we are part of um, this new group of professionals that definitely were working really hard to put the Galapagos in a better standards and to keep the Galapagos protected. Very good. So the Galapagos Islands observing through natural habitat, actually philosophy, is quite unique. Not only wildlife, but is all about an um, experience that represents the nature, the people, the new aspects of sharing with other travelers, flexibility. Definitely could be a, a trip of a lifetime. As you can see in this picture, you're gonna see these beautiful blue footed boobies and other fantastic creatures of the Galapagos Island. This is the Galapagos map, a unique volcanic oceanic archipelago not too far away from Ecuador mainland. The Galapagos area is not a small archipelago, 4,000 square miles. To the west, you can see an island that looks like a seahorse, and then you can see a little island that actually is quite rounded. The island that looks like a seahorse is Isabela, and the island to the left is Fernandina. Those islands are in top of what is called the Galapagos hotspot. That means that that part of the Galapagos archipelago, yes, are actually in an area where the volcanoes are quite active. If you move a little bit to the east, that means going to the opposite side of the island of Isabela, you're going to observe a large group of islands that are a little bit older, but, could, but no less fantastic. They are full of life. Some islands are already eroded. Some islands have full of white sand, and every single island is quite different. Every single island has a unique aspect. And us in this 
fantastic trip to the Galapagos Islands. We're going to discover the different aspects of all of these little details of the Galapagos archipelago that is full of endemic and native species. Endemic that these creatures, they evolve only in Galapagos, endemic that they arrive and they don't need to change, but they arrive only through natural source of arrival, maybe islands of vegetation, or maybe the wind, or maybe the air. Very good. So to get to the Galapagos Islands, you need to arrive to the capital of Ecuador, Quito. Natural habitat is gonna help you with all of these details. Transportation, arriving to Quito, what you need, your passport. Okay, good news for our visitors from United States. In Ecuador, we have the United States dollar as our currency. I don't wanna get in details about how that happens, but definitely when you come to Ecuador, you're gonna learn about that. But yes, we use the dollar. Quito airport is a quite modern and small, no much room to get lost. And as soon as you collect your luggage and you get outside of this area where only travelers, they are allowed it, there's gonna be our good friend, one of our natural habitat guides. This lady or gentleman is gonna take the group or maybe you come alone or with your family and it's gonna take you to our hotel in Quito that is called the Patio Andaluz. The Patio Andaluz Hotel is located at the colonial side of Quito that is just beautiful. And it, and it is one hour drive in a highway, quite modern, and it's gonna take you to the hotel. The first day when you arrive to Quito, there's no much activity, it's more to relax, but some of our travelers, not havers, they prefer to get a few days before to get used to the altitude or maybe just to have a little time to explore Quito on their own. That, by, by the way, is a really safe city. This is a little picture of, of El Patio Andaluz that looks so classic and colonial, and it is, and it's quite comfortable, and actually is a, is a beautiful, beautiful building in the middle of the colonial side of Quito. A little bit of Quito, yes, Quito, the capital of Ecuador. Ecuador, and a small country in South America, that means actually equal parts, Ecuador, the middle of the world, actually, is quite important because this unique country is crossed by the equator line. And in Ecuador is where a French geodesic expedition determined the position of the equator line around the 1700s. The altitude of Quito is around 9,000 feet that make Quito one of the highest capital of the world. That's why it's good to relax a little bit once you arrive to Quito, maybe drink some tea, water, take it easy. Quito is quite of a moderate sized city, around 3 million inhabitants. And why we go to Quito? Because Quito is one of the first cities to be declared World Heritage Site by the UNESCO in 1978 because of this unique colonial site and actually really well preserved. We're really proud of our city of Quito and we're really proud of our country, Ecuador. Well, as you can imagine, when you arrive to Quito, when you arrive to Ecuador and you want to travel to Galapagos, it's always good to wear in layers. Quito, Ecuador, Galapagos, located at the tropical part of the planet, is not too cold, it's not too warm, but it's always good to have something nice and warm. And there's always possibility for rain. We're never going to take you into the rain. We're never going to expose you to heavy weather. But it's always good to have a uh, fleece, maybe a jacket, okay, nice comfortable wear, nice comfortable clothing to feel good and never get too warm, never get too cold. That's why we always recommend you kind of to dress in layers, as I say, as we say, to dress like an onion. Not too complicated, isn't it? For the day pack, as always, we recommend always your water bottle, your hat, your sunglasses. You know, right now it is a time and face mask is always used to have it at least in your backpack, your backpack to put your belongs. Binoculars, always good, your cameras, your phones, and always with the right footwear, could be good walking shoes or tibas. But in Quito, we always recommend you to have a good walking shoes. But nevertheless, some of our travelers, they love to explore Quito in, your, in their, in their tibas. No problem with that at all. A little bit about Quito. 
good thing about our um, tour with the natural habitat is that we always two guides. One of the Galapagos guides could be me or one of my best friends flies to Quito the previous day to be with you. And then you have the Quito guide ready to receive you and to give you all of the information about Quito. In this picture, you can see me with my good friend Pablo, who is one of our Quito guides. We take you to explore the most beautiful aspects of our fantastic capital, like the colonial side of Quito, the church, the hills, the views, the history, the fantastic aspect of the unique weather of Quito. And of course, as maybe you were read reading already, we're going to take you to a chocolate tasting in one of these colonial side of Quito because maybe you know already, the legend say that chocolate was discovered in Ecuador. We're going to prove you that visiting this unique chocolate tasting that is really fantastic and really yummy. After that, walking around Quito, enjoying the plaza, enjoying the presidential square. We take you for a lunch, relaxing time, maybe a little bit of shopping. Why not? You can buy some of the toquila hats. They used to be called Panama hats and other souvenirs. Very good. Then that, that day, we're going to have a little kind of um, briefing about Galapagos. And the good news is that actually, if you want to leave anything in Quito that you don't want to take to Galapagos, you can do it. The, the philosophy of natural habitat is to help you with everything, with all of the details. We want you to have 100% fun, to be safe. That's why we offer different options. And one of them is to leave any souvenir that you, you're not going to use it in Galapagos, in Quito, and the last day of the trip, that bag, luggage or maybe bag is going to be waiting for you once you arrive to Quito again. A little bit of the first day going to, to Quito, every flight that goes to Quito leaves quite early from the Quito airport. Could be around sometimes 8.30, 9.30, but nevertheless, we always wake up a little bit early, maybe 5.45, luggage outside of, the, of your rooms. Then, you know, to visit the Galapagos Islands, that is a, a national park, there's a lot of regulations. One of them is that actually all of the luggage, they need to be inspected by a person from the Galapagos National Park, and that happens at the airport. But natural habitat, Quito, through some, some little... Kind of connections, we have the possibility to bring that inspector to the hotel, and that's how that inspection takes place at the hotel. So we don't need to worry about making lines at the Quito airport, and everything is going to be ready before leaving the hotel. Breakfast at six, then everybody jump on the bus, get into the Quito airport. We have a Quito airport experts who's gonna help us with our Galapagos visas, with our airline tickets, with our luggage. It's really unique. You're gonna feel really nice and comfortable with these logistics. Then 9.30, the flight departure. We're gonna talk a little bit about the plane, that way you're not gonna know exactly what to expect. But just to let you know, we're gonna to arrive to Galapagos around noon. Galapagos is one hour earlier than Ecuador. So that's good. We are always one hour before timing of, uh, of Ecuador. So that gives us a little more time to enjoy the first afternoon in Galapagos. So with all of these little details, we, the plan is to arrive to the boat around 1 p.m. ready for the next adventure. And all of this is really smooth. From the bus to the airport, waiting a little bit there, reading a book, and then from the plane to the little, to the bus, who's going to take you to the dock, and then we get to the boat. Let me show you a little bit of, of that in a few seconds. Very good. Well, we have many questions about the plane. It's an Avianca airline, it's an Airbus. That means that it's a quite a large, comfortable airplane. And the flight from Quito to Guayaquil, because we stop in Guayaquil, the plane needs to refuel is 45 minutes. 
layover in Guayaquil to refuel 30 minutes. And then without disembarking, we are going from Guayaquil to Galapagos, that is one hour, 30 minutes. That means that in total could be a good three hours. These flights are really comfortable. They don't give any food right now, but we're gonna take you, we're gonna give you some snacks, that way you're gonna get ready for that. But I think that is not a big problem. Very good. Once we arrive to the Galapagos Islands, it's good to know that we're arriving to the Galapagos National Park and Marine Reserve. This national park was established in 1959, and as you know already, is one of the most important na uh, national parks of the planet, and we're really proud of that. And because of that, there's some regulations that we need to follow. All of them are really simple, and you're gonna and and, and they're gonna make you feel quite protected and they're going to make you feel that you are protecting the ecosystem. Well, arriving to the Galapagos Airport that is quite modern and unique, they say that is the first ecological airport of the world, that's quite nice. So we need to pass on some regulations, we have our Galapagos visa, we need to get to the Galapagos National Park inspector, everybody needs to pay a fee, that field already paid, no problem. Collect our luggage. Before collect our luggage, there's some training dogs that smell the luggage, no problem with that. We collect all the luggage and always everybody together. In, here in these adventures, there's no loners. Everybody is part of the natural habitat family and we go together, we leave that area and we're ready to face the wildlife of the Galapagos Islands. Sometimes at the airport, there are some land iguanas, Darwin's finches and other creatures. Very good. The good thing about the natural habitat program is that there's always two naturalist guides. One of my friends is gonna be there. There's all of us were fantastic friends. All of us, we are really experts in Galapagos. And as they say here in Galapagos, the only thing better in, in a Galapagos tour than one guide is two guides. And yes, with natural habitat, you're gonna have two Narcos guides. And that's really good because we can take care of all of you. If one group wants to snorkeling and another group wants to do the dinghy ride, maybe somebody wants to just do a, li a, a little dinghy ride, we take care of everybody because everybody is important in these trips. Very good. Just then, before you come, because this is the me, this is the meaning of this little talk, is to let you know that the Galapagos Islands is a Galapagos is a national park. But what does it mean? There is some important regulations. There is some important rules, and actually, these rules are not optional. We need to receive them, and we need to apply them, and we need to go with them. There's no actually another way to do. Just to let you know a little bit, please, when you take pictures, no flash, no food in the trails of the Galapagos National Park, we're going to see a huge amount of wildlife, sea lions, blue-footed boobies, marine iguanas, land iguanas, and other fantastic creatures. But we need to stay always six feet from the wildlife. And then we can make it a little bit more, the better. As we always recommend from where to take the pictures, what would be the best position recording of the sun, the best angle to take your picture. We love when you take fantastic pictures. So oh, we're gonna be always there. And of course, we love to interpret it, why these animals like that, why the blue-footed boobies, they have blue feet, why the sea lions are called sea lions are not seals, and all of that, that for sure you wanna know about the Galapagos Islands. We always follow trails. Everything is around the trail. You don't need to worry about what happened away from the trail because everything is there. The Galapagos National Park planned all of this for you, for our visitors. You are the reason why the Galapagos National Park is so important. So we want to take it to the best places. As you can imagine, no garbage. And if we find a little plastic, we collect. We never feed the animals. We never disturb the animals. No music. <laughs> and we respect other groups because there's gonna be sometimes other groups around and that's quite important. Very good. So leaving the, leaving the airport, getting to a bus like this, nice and comfortable, 10 minutes ride, no more than that, we arrive to one of the docks of the different islands where the airports are located. 
Then we get on board of the panga or tender, that is the way transportation from the dog to the boat and from the boat to the dog or to the beach. We call the tender pangas as the classic name. And all of them, all of our three yachts, they have really comfortable and fancy tenders or pangas. The Nemo 3, the Petrel, the Tip Top 4. Always with life jackets and always with a little um, information and a little process to be able to be always safe, always giving hands, always the one, two, three steps. We're going to let you all about that because we want you to have fun, but always to be safe. So we get on board of the, of the pangas or tenders and we get to the Nemo tree. The luggage is coming through. Do not worry. Everything is already under control with you. Every, everybody's going to have the luggage and everybody's going to have a lot of fun. Very good. So right now you are already into the actually natural habitat family where everybody actually is ready to have fun. Everybody has respect for opinions. There's a flexibility every time and always open to this new world that actually is a wildlife. But there is plenty of Ecuadorian crew members and officers and all of them are ready to help you and to show you this fantastic part of the plan. Very good. A little bit of the aspects of money, internet. Well, there's no internet, so that makes easy things. There will be internet soon, but on board, we prefer no internet. That way you, that, that way you can connect more with wildlife. We're going to visit a few little towns where there is internet. All right. No smoking. OK, no problem with that, I think. There's drinks on board. Yeah, you can have uh, any kind of cocktail. And we're going we're gonna to explain you. I'm going to explain you about what drinks are complementary. All right. Luggage, no problem with that. OK. And actually, money. Yes, we need some money. Credit cards are welcome. You can open a bar bill on board. You can pay at the end with your credit card. So that's good. And everything is really safe and actually, as I say, ready for you. Very good. Just to continue a little bit with these little details that sometimes they are quite important, okay? What is included in our trees with natural habitat? There's always the wine or the beer at dinner or no dinner, no problem with that. Our barmers are always ready to give you a little glass of wine for sunset or maybe a beer, so these are included. And natural habitat takes care of the gratitude of waiters, porters, bus drivers, and local guides. And of course, all of the meals on board and into our different excursions are included. What is not included? A extra liquor that you want to take. Maybe you want to have a margarita, or maybe a piña colada that you need to open a bar bill. Person like expenses, you want to buy something to bring back home. Maybe a t-shirt or maybe a jewelry in town you can buy anything that you want and the gratitude for your expedition leaders that not include just to let you know that way we can pass to more important aspects of our trip very good so right now when you're thinking what kind of a yacht i, I want to go because we have three of them i'm going to let you know a little bit about all of them in a few seconds we have one really nice fancy catamaran that is called the Petrel. Good to know all of the yachts that we use are owned by local families, and that's fantastic. All of the yachts of the Galapagos Islands, they have their own history, and of course, the history with natural habitat with this group of families is quite unique. I'm really proud to support all of these local initiatives. So the yacht Petrel is a really comfortable catamaran, 150 foot, that's quite large, with large cabins, 16 guests, we're going to be on board, two guides, and it's very elegant and sweet for the sea. We are going to cover the east and the west part of the archipelago in a different itineraries. Let me show you a little bit about the itineraries of the Petrel. All of the yachts of the Galapagos Islands, they have two itineraries dividing in one week to the east, one week to the west. And Doing that, the Galapagos National Park, because this is a Galapagos National Park regulation, actually help two things. To reduce the impact 
of uh, us into the wildlife to let the wildlife to recover and to provide us with some moments with only us visiting a different location in Galapagos that, believe me, is really unique. It's incredible when you're just you with your friends, with your group in one destination. But even if there's other groups, everybody is with their own guide and everybody is in their own world, in their own little moment. So you don't interfere, you, you don't get much connected with other groups. Maybe just to say hello, passing by, but everybody is in their own adventure. The Western Round, younger islands, more wild could be maybe, possibilities of volcanic eruption, no guarantee, but active volcanoes, yes. More black lava and some unique creatures that belong only to that part of the Galapagos, like the flyless cormorants. Cormor, I'm going to show you a few pictures later. And then the other itinerary to the east is actually still fantastic, but more actually white sand beaches. That could be the perfect actual description. There's a plenty of white sand beach. Everything is covered with white sand because of the erosion and the time for these tiny little particles of coral to get accumulated on top of these ancient islands. There's more colonies of sea lions and uh, maybe there is more chance to observe some blue-footed boobies because blue-footed boobies, they live in colonies in these flat ancient islands. But just to let you know, both itineraries are just fantastic. If you ask me when I need to travel to the Galapagos Islands, I think that the, the, my answer could be when you have time because every time the Galapagos Islands, it is just unique. We're gonna, we're gonna get to that point in a few minutes. I'm gonna continue a little bit more with the other yachts that we use. Then we have a fantastic yacht that is called the Tip Top Four. Maybe you know a little bit about the history of the first pioneers of the Galapagos Islands, a family from Germany that recolonized the Galapagos Islands around 1930, family Wilmer. They came running away from Europe after the first world war. And this family Bilmer, with all the group of families too, but family Bilmer are really important because they came to the Galapagos Islands with nothing. And right now they have a small fleet of yachts. And us, we are partnered with them. And one of them is the tip top four. So there's a lot of history in this yacht. And the way you can check is quite of a large yacht, maybe the largest of our fleet, 125 foot, 16 guests with a comfort and a style. So we have two really unique yachts, the top four with their, with their own itineraries, like a, the same islands, but in different days. That would be the perfect description of the different itineraries. The way you can see, go to Isabela, at the Western Route, go to Genovesa too, fantastic. Then uh, Floriana, the Eastern Round, the Ancient Islands, San Cristobal, Española, but there's always a little stop in Santa Cruz Island. I want to tell you why in a few minutes, because of course, if you go to Galapagos, you want to visit the giant tortoises, isn't it? And as you know already, as we have our own giant tortoise camp, that it actually is one of the highlights of this adventure. Every day is a highlight, by the way, in Galapagos. Very good. And then if you're more adventurous, you want to feel the wind and you want to be sailing, we offer you the Nemo tree, the sailing catamaran. Of course, a beautiful catamaran, a little bit smaller, 75 foot, is really the look sailing catamaran and you're more connected to the water. Definitely you're more connected to the water there and is really unique. Just to be in a sailing boat makes you feel like a, and the sailor and everybody is welcome to steal to steer the wheel and is a quite a unique catamaran too. The same beautiful itineraries to the when you travel to the west, you go to the younger islands. When you travel to the east, you go to the older islands with some little details here and there, but all of them are just fantastic itineraries. All right, a little bit about itineraries in pictures. The Eastern itinerary, you're gonna be around 
the island of San Cristobal, that the picture of this structure here, it is called Kicker Rock. In the picture show you turtles getting into the water in Floriana Island. The other picture show you a sea lion just moving around our friends in the island of Española. And one of the most unique birds of the Galapagos Islands, the white albatross that lives in Española Island, but only from the month of May to late December, just to let you know, in, in case you're a fan of albatross and you want to travel to the Galapagos Islands to see the wave albatross, remember to visit us from May to late December, because after that is not in Galapagos, flies towards the actually offshores of the southern hemisphere around the offshore grounds of Peru and Chile. Okay. What happened at the Eastern itinerary? I'm sorry, at the Western itinerary, more marine iguanas. We're going to see many, many marine iguanas everywhere, but the high concentration of marine iguanas that they look really aggressive, but they're most kind of tame, unique creatures of the planet. They are concentrated into the Western part of the archipelago. Why? Because the water is cooler. There's more algae for them, and they are bigger and in large number. This weird bird down to the left side of the screen is called the flyless cormorant. It lives only in the western part of the archipelago. And yes, is a cormorant that actually doesn't fly. So that is quite unique and incredible. And if you want to see the flyless cormorant, join us from our western itinerary. Galapagos penguins, of course, one of the attractions of our unique islands. You can you're gonna see Galapagos penguins in both itineraries if you are a fan of penguins, do not worry. You can visit us and go to the east or to the west, but definitely you visit the western itinerary because the water is cooler and there's more small fish for the penguins. You're going to see more Galapagos penguins. And the picture of these unique creatures, the only seagoing lizard of the world, the Galapagos marine iguana. Very good. I put some picture of the classic moments of Galapagos Definitely everybody, if you visit us and you want to go to the western side of, Gal of the Galapagos, if you want to go to the eastern side of the Galapagos Islands, you're going to go in any of our boats, you're going to have time in one of our one of the days of the week to enjoy your a little, uh, not a little, a lot of time with the giant tortoises. Blue footed boobies, yes, blue footed boobies, they're going to be around, and sea lions. That picture is quite nice. The big male sea lion with the long whiskers was checking the group while I was taking the, the picture and having a lot of fun. By the way, maybe the pictures are not, they're not the best, but I'm really proud because I took them and I took them maybe during the last two months, just to let you know that the Galapagos Island right now is packed with life. All right, what is the day on board? We have many questions about what happened once you get on board, we sleep maybe until nine, what we do a little activity here and there? No, my dear friends. If you come to the Galapagos Islands, it's for adventure, for fun, to kind of squeeze the day full of fantastic moments. So maybe sometimes you're going to feel that it's a little bit too much, you, but you just have to remember that everything is optional and you have to go in your own pace. So more or less, the wake up call in Galapagos is around 6 a.m., could be a little bit early sometimes, or maybe a little bit late sometimes. That could be around 6. 6.30, good breakfast, one hour for, of a good breakfast. Then, actually, we were going for our first visit. Every time in the morning there is a visit, maybe sometimes disembarking in a white sand beach and walk, in other opportunities disembarking in a dock and walk the trail, looking for sea lions, blue-footed boobies, and any surprise that comes. Every walk is around two hours or maybe a little bit more. In Galapagos, one hour is a minute. So we try to make it at least two hours, one hour, 30 minutes, that way everybody enjoys the, the walk. Some of the walks are really easy, other walks are not so easy, when you, maybe some, some of us, we need a walking stick, okay? So in the morning, the walk. Then we come back on board, and every time that we come back on board, there's the right amount of time to relax a little bit. There's always, our barman waiting for us with a little cocktail, may, or let's put that way, a little drink, okay, maybe a juice, tropical juice, 
and always a little healthy snack. Sometimes fruit, sometimes a, a little empanadas or a little something here and there to eat. And after that, getting ready for the next adventure. It's already more or less 10 a.m. and it's time for a snorkeling. We're really proud of our system because before the snorkeling session, we give you a snorkeling briefing and we are gonna be sure that everybody is gonna be comfortable at the snorkeling. We have some visitors that their first time snorkeling, we take care of them. We have more advanced, we take care of them, all of us together. Only if you really don't want to snorkel, like, you know, I don't want to snorkel at all, no problem. But we want everybody to enjoy the water activities. So if you don't want to snorkel, in one of the days, maybe you feel a little bit lazy, we offer you a dinghy ride to, and to join us for that activity. Then we come back on board, relax time, more or less around 12, could be a maybe 12.30, lunch, good lunch. And then you know what happened after that? Good siesta. Time to relax, maybe read a book or a good siesta to recover energies away from the sun because the sun in Galapagos is really strong. We need to be always protected. And the best way to get ready for the afternoon activity, it is to have a good siesta. More or less around 2 to 2.30, we start with the afternoon activity. Many times the first activity of the afternoon is a snorkel to take advantage of the sun and we're gonna be already in another destination. In this excursion of the Galapagos Islands, we are moving a lot. All of the yachts, they have a permit to stay six hours in one location, and then we're going to another location for six hours. So that gives you an opportunity to visit two different locations every day. That is really fantastic. So what we do, if, it's, if we have a snorkeling, we go for another snorkeling, maybe a dinghy ride, and sometimes kayak. Some of our trips are more kind of um, focused in this extra activity that is the kayak. If you want to sign for a kayak trip, definitely you want to do more a lot of kayak. But some of our trips are more like a, a more focused in wildlife, but there is some kayak options too, because kayak is so nice and it's not difficult at all. Then we come back on board, a little relax, and then they visit in the afternoon to another fantastic location. Sometimes we disembark at the beach, then we offer you some towels to dry your feet. You can put tivas, you can put shoes, and we walk into another adventure. Sometimes we're doing some dinghy rides, but every time, every afternoon, there is something to do. Then we come back around 5.30, 5.45, sometimes six. Even if the Galapagos National Park closes at 6 p.m., we always get to the limit because we want to offer you all the time in, that is possible into this fantastic part of the world. And then time to relax, 6.30 or 6.45, a briefing with tomorrow's activities. And there's always a little talk about marine currents, geology, Charles Darwin, that is so important for the Galapagos and world history, and other aspects of this Galapagos excursion. 7 p.m. dinner, and then if you want, you can have a little relaxed time at the sun deck to have a stargazing because the stars are always available there. Depends on the season. Sometimes early in the night, you can see the Southern Cross and sometimes early in the morning, depends on the, oh, 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 the season of the year. But the stars are always ready and it's really nice. But let me tell you that the Galapagos Islands is not a destination where you stay awake too late. Everybody goes to bed around 8.30, maybe no more than 9. That actually, that's good because the next day, there's another adventure. Okay, just to give you some details about how is the, the programs and pictures, this is how we get to the dry land. Look, there's a picture of Genovesa Island. The dinghy gets to the dock with disembark with the lap jackets and, and actually is your feet are going to get dry and you're going to use the right footwear that is called the dry landing. Very good. In this excursion, we're going to visit different territories. As you can see, sometimes we're going to walk in this beautiful white sand with no shoes. That's great. In opportunities, we're going to walk in these little boardwalks with steps. Fantastic. But and in other opportunities, we're going to walk on top of some rocks. 
where actually you need to have your walking stick and we need to get ready for this kind of challenging terrain. But us, we're always ready to help everybody who needs help, not only with walking sticks, but with ourselves, giving you a hand to somebody who has a problem to walk. And sometimes one of our crew members gets there to help you because remember, we want everybody to enjoy these activities. Very good. This is a picture of the wet landing. The dinghy goes from the back of the dinghy to the beach. When you disembark, as you, as you can see in the picture, and remember, safety first. Always give a hand, always receive help. For some of our travelers, it takes a few, a few days to get used to that, but the sooner the better. As soon as you realize that all of us were there to help you and, and to make you feel comfortable, comfortable and not to make you feel like you're a person who is not ready for that, for this kind of adventure, more fun you're gonna, you, you're gonna have. Because once again, the reason why this program is so successful is all of our visitors and everybody who wants to enjoy the Galapagos Islands, especially with us. Very good. Panga rides, we get into on board of the tender panga and we take you to these unique territories to enjoy maybe sometimes penguins, blue-footed boobies, these beautiful rock formations. By the way, all of the rocks of the Galapagos Islands are the basalt or oceanic volcanic rocks similar to Hawaii, quite, quite impressive black, brown, yellow, is just incredible, the colors of these rocks. Very good. And an important part of our excursion is the snorkel. We provide you all of the equipment, wetsuits, masks, snorkel things, flotation device if you need it. But if you have your own equipment, the one that you trust, because you have a specific shape in your, in your face and you have a nice mask, bring it. Please bring it. Okay, that way you're, you're not going to have any trouble with our masks. Our masks are first class, but sometimes, you know, you know more than us, how is your face? So if you prefer to bring your own mask, bring it, no problem with that. Snorkeling is just fantastic in Galapagos. The water is not warm. Please do not expect water as warm as Florida, but please do not expect water as cold as California. The water is, a, is considered moderate, and we have really good wetsuit to make you feel comfortable. And the snorkeling is more or less one hour or 45 minutes enjoying this fantastic submarine wildlife of the Galapagos Islands with our local experts, Andres and all of your new friends, the Galapagos guides. Kayak, of course, as I, I say already, there's some um, trips where you, we focus more in kayak. This is a picture of our friends after a beautiful, Actually, that is the sunrise, sunrise session in this unique destination called Chinese Hut with the Nemo tree behind, a little morning of kayaking, or maybe one of the days is going to be a little afternoon of kayaking. So kayak is another really beautiful activity. Very good. In all of the trips, we're going to take you to the giant tortoise camp. That is our unique little trademark where we're gonna spend one night at this fantastic location. You, have a, you can choose between the three houses or the fancy tents, all of them are great. And of course there is giant tortoise there, music and the perfect night to recover energies and get ready for more action, the giant tortoise camp. At the giant tortoise camp area, we have a good friends that actually they have a, a coffee farm and we, they, we want you to join us for a coffee tasting. It's optional, but is highly recommended. All of these programs around the highlands of Santa Cruz Island, where you're gonna take you to the giant tortoise camp, coffee tasting, tortoise camp, there is for a meeting, they, for, they have a, a reason. Why is the reason? To protect the giant tortoises, because giant tortoises are the engineers of the Galapagos ecosystem unique in the planet, the largest of the world, and many other mysteries and secrets that they possess. And you're gonna learn all about them if you visit us in one of our trips. Very good. Then everybody in the same uh, mood, we're gonna take you to the Galapagos 
National Park Rearing Center, where you're going to meet the baby tortoises and the program to recover this population of giant tortoises that almost that actually got almost extinct to more or less 200 years of whaling activity in Galapagos around the 1800s. Oh my God, so sad. More than 100,000 giant tortoises they were killed during that process. So right now, us, the Galapagos National Park needs to recover the ecosystem and to recover the ecosystem, they need to recover some iconic species in this opportunity, the giant tortoises, through two important processes. Eradication of introduced species and recover the endemic ecosystem. So we're going to take you there and you're going to have so much fun observing the baby tortoises. And by the way, these little ones, they are one year old baby tortoises. We're going to visit a few towns. This is my hometown, Port Ayora. Really proud of our community. No pickpockets, no homeless people. Nobody's going to try to sell you anything. You're really unique actually feeling really unique atmosphere in our hometown, Puerto Ayor. One of the unique uh, actual aspects of the town when you walk in your free time is to visit the fisherman dock where you're gonna see the local fishermen actually selling fish and the birds and sea lions try to take a little bit of what is there. It's really fun and is unique from our community. Talking about food. Please do not worry if you are a vegan, if you are vegetarian, if there you have some specific um, regulations or something that you can eat, we are here to resolve that situation. Our chefs, our team is ready to accommodate any need that you have. We are experts doing that. So please, you, what you need to do is to let us know, Natural Habitat Office and we're going to help you with everything that you need to have a really nice meal every day and get healthy. And yes, maybe a little bit extra weight, but that is vacation, isn't it? All right. And then two alcoholic drinks every night. We know already that. That's good too. Well, a little bit about this information I'm going to give you right now is going to help you to decide when to come. The Galapagos Islands, 600 miles from Ecuador mainland, you can see in this map, is a crossroad of different currents. From May to beginning of December, there is a cold current called the Humboldt Current that comes from South America to the Galapagos Islands. With that current is the arrival of migratory creatures, humpback whales, many birds, and there's a a willing of nutrients, so the productivity is strong. From December to May is our warm season with the arrival of El Nino current or the Panama flow. At that moment, the weather gets warmer, there's more sunny days, there's some rain too, and it's the beginning of the mating season for reptiles. You can see many turtles, you can see many marine iguanas, and Giant tortoises are happy too, so it's quite unique. Sometimes this rainy season could be a little bit too much, but then when the rain stops, it's completely sunny. All of these currents are controlled by an upwelling of a submarine current that is called the Cromwell Current. The Cromwell Current is a submarine cold current that irrigates Galapagos with nutrients. And this cold current makes Galapagos a unique archipelago of the world. Is the only tropical is the only archipelago in a tropical territory with a subtropical uh, weather. That means that it's never too warm, and actually sometimes the water could be a little bit cool. But cool water, more nutrients, more nutrients, more life, and that's why we need, isn't it? So that is more or less about the currents of Galapagos that control the weather. Sunrise at 6 a.m., sunset at 6 p.m. every day. The weather changes according to these currents. And good news, in Galapagos, impossible to have hurricanes, storms. We are in a territory called the actually intertropical convergence zone that makes all of these heavy weather to stay away from the Galapagos Islands. So that's good. Maybe some volcanic eruption if you visit us to the western route. But Heavy weather, no. Sometimes feels when you're moving in 
navigating from one place to another one, but never, never storm. Tell you this, help me to check more or less the temperature of the currents and the temperature of the air. The way you can see from January to May, look at that, 82 degrees Fahrenheit, more or less the air te temperature and actually the actually the temperature of the ocean could be around the 70s. Then in the opposite side of the year, from May to December, is a little bit cooler, yes, but we have our wetsuit, we have our fleece, and as we know already, there is more productivity in the ocean during the month of May to December. And everything starts to change around May, June, when you have this transition time of the year, and the same from December to January, when things are changing uh, once again in Galapagos. Very good. So, a little reminder about what to bring. You need to bring your, your water bottles, your medication, of course, cameras always, waterproof uh, jackets, and yep, everything that could be, is gonna protect you from the rain. Sunglasses, of course, your sunscreen, sun hat, and of course, your sense of adventure. After all of that, sadly, we need to arrive to the last day in Galapagos. Maybe the last day of that adventure, but maybe not the last day to, to visit Galapagos in your life. We have many, many, many travelers that are coming back uh, once again with the family, with the other friends. It's just fantastic to see them again visit us today in Galapagos. So do not worry. The last day we have an early activity in all of the yachts, breakfast, healthy breakfast on board. We take you to the Galapagos airport and then we say goodbye. Then you get on board of the Avianca airline in Quito. Always we stop in Guayaquil. No complicated at all. In Quito, there is our friend, the Quito guide. That Quito guide is going to take you to the Windham Hotel that is really close to the airport. And we're going to help you with your flights. At the Windham Hotel, you have a night room. That's great. And then you go back home with all of these memories and ready to continue with your life with the positive energy of the Galapagos Islands. And with that, I have to say thank you very much. And ready for any question, my dear friends. Andres, thank you so much. Before we start the Q&A, I want to remind everyone that they can submit their questions via the questions field in the control panel. Um, but we've got a bunch of great questions already. So. Um, Let's see. Did you mention um, a visa requirement for the Galapagos? Is that something that NATHAB provides or is it necessary? Yes, that is something that NATHAB provides and that is something that every traveler needs to have to visit the Galapagos Island. It's a paper that the government uh, passed to all of the visitors and in that paper, you know, they, they know how many days you're going to stay in Galapagos and when you're going and where you're going to be and when you're going to leave is more to the actually migratory system to help the Galapagos Islands to be controlled. We call it friendly Galapagos visa, but that, that is something that actually the, the natural habitat help you with that. You don't need to worry uh, at all about that. Excellent. Um, clearly, there are some people pretty enamored with the idea of traveling to the Galapagos, and I'm going to blend a couple questions together. Um, can you do the Eastern and Western itinerary together, back to back? Do you know if those line up? And can you extend your trip beyond um, those itineraries, mainly uh, per perhaps on the mainland? Yes, yes, definitely. The only, the only thing that you need to do is to get in contact with Natural Habitat Office and our friendly officers and the people who help you with all of this. They're going to open all of these possibilities. Yes, there's chance to actually stay the two weeks on board. We, I have already a few guests who did that. And yeah, it takes you more time, but you're going to have double the, double the fun. And yes, you can visit Ecuador, maybe an extension or maybe a pre-trip. There's already many visitors that go to the rainforest or maybe after Galapagos, they go to 
It's quite common to get to Peru, Cusco. So yeah, no problem with that. Just uh, present your, actually, what you want to do to the natural habitat office, and they're going to help you with all of these little details. Excellent. Um, can you explain what led to the cormorant, cormorants um, to be flightless? Ah, uh, that is just unique. And like the rest of the creatures that arrived to the Galapagos Islands in this process of arrival to these islands of vegetation, and then arriving to these islands, evolved in a different way to survive, to adapt it, and to reproduce. What happened in Galapagos? The Galapagos Islands is an oceanic archipelago, volcanic archipelago that was colonized by, by different creatures. One of them, the cormorant from South America. This cormorant that, that lives in around the shores of Ecuador, arriving to the Galapagos Islands, was looking for a good place to live. Because of the lack of the land resident predator, he starts to accommodate to areas where there's more food and actually jumping from island to island to island to island, arrive to this western part of the archipelago. And through this process of evolution, he became flyless. Why? No need to fly away from any predator. So the wings got shorter, the body got bigger, the feet got larger, and then they go into the water. And you know what they eat? They eat octopus, they eat eels, they eat small fish. They're quite unique birds. And they're, that they're considered another of these creatures that are living proof of evolution. Mm. So cool. <laughs> Um, can you, I'm not sure if this is a, a trick question, but <laughs> um, where is the best chance to swim with the sea lions, the east or west itinerary? You can swim with sea lions everywhere, at the east or the west, but definitely there's more chance to swim with baby sea lions in large number at the eastern itinerary. But nevertheless, at the west itinerary, you can swim with a lot of sea lions. But the eastern islands, they have larger colonies of sea lions, and that means that there's more chance to really play with sea lions in a way that everybody expects in uh, the eastern itinerary. But the western itinerary, you can have great surprises with many, many sea lions snorkeling with you. Mm. So cool. That, that was definitely one of my favorite memories of, of my trip to the Galapagos. <laughs> Um, can you talk a little bit about the seas? Does one need to bring medication for seasickness? It's always good to bring some medication, dear friends. It's always good to have the medication that is going to make you feel comfortable. There's some patches or Dramamine pills that help you. Because every time that you we travel into the ocean, there is some movement. The seas are not too rough, but sometimes some of our friends that are coming from Arizona or places in the middle of the uh, United States or Europe, they, they feel a little bit uncomfortable during the long navigations at night. Because during the day, we don't navigate much, but the navigations are during the night. And at that moment, you need to take a, a Dramamine pill. Us on board, we offer every night when you have the long navigations, some of the local Dramamine pills that work really good. So we, we want you to be happy. We want you to be to avoid to be seasick sea because we know that is really bad. We always let you know in advance. So we, we consider that we, we are protected in that. Excellent. Um, last question we have time for today. Can you describe a little bit more about what folks might see when they're snorkeling? Uh, Are fantastic. Fish, coral, sure. what else is in there? <laughs> Northern in Galapagos, you we expect to see a lot of tropical reef fish. Some of the fish are quite large, parrot fish, racer surgeon fish, and all of them are really, I can say friendly because you know they're not friendly, but they're not tame at all. They come and go. You're going to see lava flows covered with invertebrates. Sometimes corals, you, you're not going to see coral reefs, but you're going to see a huge amount of invertebrates and coral. You're going to see many sea stars. 
you're going to see a lot of colors and yes you're going to see large creatures you're going to snorkel with sea lions they're going to come sea lions they really love to play with us in body itineraries you're going to see turtles sometimes many turtles are coming we're going to let you know how to behave in front of a turtle that way the turtles are eating the algae and they're not going to move and yes you're going to snorkel with sharks white tip reef sharks and they're not aggressive at all but you're going to snorkel with big big fish sometimes there is some eagle rays and sometimes you can see actually in all kind of different creatures in terms of more or less numbers but all these snorkels are just fantastic it's it's absolutely amazing and i will say just to add a couple more that were highlights for me but the penguins <laughs> being in the water with the with the penguins yeah. that was amazing they're so fast and they're swimming around getting their fish and then yeah. we did get lucky enough to see a couple seahorses which were so oh, cool yeah. that is the worst itinerary no that that is that is difficult that is, <laughs> you, with the pen, you can, we can snorkel with penguins in both itineraries that's really nice yeah mm -hmm. sorry for that but thank you very much to, to help me with that <laughs> uh -huh, absolutely. I'll never forget that experience. Well, thank you so much for taking time to present to us today and for, you know, bringing us to the Galapagos with you for an hour. That was such a treat. I'll turn it back to you for closing comments. Yes. Thank you very much, my dear friends, future non havers and all the team who is listening to this little webinar. Happy to help you a little bit to get more connected with Galapagos. And um, yes, we're going to be here waiting for you. And um, thank you. Thank you very much for the opportunity to give this information to everybody. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I want to thank everybody who tuned in and who offered such great questions. Please join us again tomorrow for our next Daily Dose of Nature. You can check out this week's lineup, including registration links, on our website at nadhab.com forward slash webinars. We did record today's presentation and we will have the replay available on our website soon. With that, I'll conclude the webinar. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Thank you very much.